Hi, welcome to the Interaxis YouTube channel and Interaxis.io. Uh, today we're going to go into a, a new stream of topics uh, where we're going to talk about composability. Composability is one of the uh, key hallmarks of decentralized finance, right? So what does composability mean? Composability is, uh, when we've talked in the past about being able to build um, on top of a base layer plus a protocol plus an app plus uh, potentially another app, that's really composability. Uh, some in this space refer to it as financial uh, Lego blocks, right? So it's like we're, we're building block on top of block on top of block um, in order to create some sort of uh, financial security or some sort of financial instrument or service or w whatever it might be. and. Uh, it, to this point, Ethereum, blockchain, decentralized finance is giving us that ability and a lot of the talented programmers and, and talented financial people and entrepreneurs are, are building on that uh, right now and giving us um, the equivalent in decentralized finance of things we have in traditional finance and they're giving us even better options. So let me um, take a few steps back and, and talk about where we are with that. In the traditional world, we'll go back to the traditional world, in the traditional world, composability is not that easy. Say, for instance, I have a thousand dollars, call it, you know, US dollars in a, sitting in my pocket. Someone gives me a check, right? I need to put that into the bank, right? And to open a bank account, the bank might ask me all sorts of information. So now I have a bank account. And let's say I want to take that thousand dollars and invest it in some sort of fund or security. Now I have to get a brokerage account, right? Um, and uh, move the money from the bank account to the brokerage account. And then potentially within the brokerage account, I want to, you know, buy stock. Now this uh, stock might be denoted in the, it, it's actually uh, in the name of, of usually the brokerage, the custodian, and in my name for uh, beneficiary purposes only. Right, so I, I'm really not, it's really not that easy and it's not that quick for me to take money that, that someone might have written me a check, put it to the bank, put it into the brokerage, buy stock, buy a, a fund, um, lend, certainly not to lend money. All this stuff doesn't happen very easily, certainly not um, necessarily algorithmically or, or automatically, and it's always uh, under someone else's custody, right? So there's not a lot of composability in the traditional world. There's a lot of paperwork that needs to be filled out. Uh, there's a lot of determining who owns what, who's actually going to hold the asset, account for the assets, and such. And, and the, I think, I believe the closest we've come is some of the either algorithmic trading where I might put my money directly into some sort of, say, hedge fund. And then what the hedge fund does is just algorithmically trade in and out of the market and I just own a piece of the fund and, and a piece of the profits. Uh, the other alternative is, is say, robo-advisors. And these are, uh, I've talked about this before, guys like Betterment, Wealthfront, uh, some of the other uh, robo advisors where I can just say, hey, I want, here's, here's my risk profile, okay? I, I'm a, a moderate risk profile. And what they're gonna do is take my, my money and, and allocate it to different funds. And they're going to, as, as this fund maybe goes up in value, they'll, they'll take some off the table and put it into this fund, which is maybe a little bit more conservative. So it, it makes me more moderate overall. The other thing that some of the robo-advisors done, have done, which is closer to some level of composability, is, is they allow me to plan for different goals. So I might say, I have a goal to take my family on a European vacation. Uh, next year, it, I know it's going to cost us ten thousand dollars. I'm going to start with five thousand, uh, and and I want you all to manage it in a in a way based on my risk profile and everything else. That um, maybe you take you know five hundred dollars a a month out of a a bank account, right? So I might put in five thousand dollars to start with. They're going to take five hundred dollars per month from a bank account, right? That's going to go into this goal based. Uh, account, which is going to manage it, 
to get to my eventual goal, right? And by managing it, they're going to put it in, in some funds that might be aggressive at first. And as the, these funds make money, they're going to make it more conservative to get to my goal of $10,000 for my vacation, right? That's almost as close as we've come to composability. This still doesn't uh, allow me really to use any of this as to collateralize it and I, I'm usually not custodying it. This is custodied elsewhere. All right, so that, that's how things kind of work in the traditional world. Um, in the decentralized world where we start looking at composability, composability is the ability to kind of layer uh, protocol on top of protocol or protocol on top of app or, or what have you. So. If, if you want to get down to it, we started with, say, uh, Ethereum, right, ETH. So I, I, can, I could buy ETH. At the beginning, I could buy ETH maybe on, on an exchange like Coinbase and just kind of hold it there, right? And then what we got to is um, the, the folks at, at Maker created DAI, right? So now, I, on, on top of my ETH, I, I can form a... Uh, I can collateralize this and I can get DAI out. Now I can take that DAI and I can put that into a, say, a compound or DY, DX or fulcrum loan and I can actually earn money. So I can earn interest on this. Now I started with ETH, which is still potentially locked up in this contract, which has given me DAI, which has given me the ability to now earn interest, right? And hopefully the ETH is going in value and I, and I don't get liquidated, right? Now, the other thing I can do with this DAI, uh, potentially with this ETH, is instead of doing that, I can, I can possibly use it as collateral uh, to borrow, which is essentially the same thing as I was doing over there, but I can potentially use it to collateral to, uh, uh, as collateral to borrow in another protocol, and everything is based on smart contracts. Right, so this is all driven by code. It's automatically done. I don't have to really negotiate. I don't have to worry um, about keeping track of everything. It'll all get, it'll all be tracked by a smart contract. I can look in my wallet that that is uh, that I'm custodying, and I and I can see all this. Right, so I can go from ETH to Maker to Dai to to Compound, DYDX, Fulcrum, whatever I want to use um, to get a loan. Um, I can. I can go from ETH to say something like, and I've talked about this, synthetics. I can stake that or, or lock it up in, in their terms. And then I can use that to get a synthetic uh, USD, which I trade for say a synthetic uh, Aussie dollar or synthetic Bitcoin or synthetic inverse. Bitcoin, right, if I think Bitcoin's going to go down. So I've taken this ETH and potentially convert it to synthetic inverse Bitcoin, and maybe I hedge myself elsewhere, right? So why do I start talking about composability? Because this is where a lot of people are, are, are building, right? I mean, I, I can take some of this, take some DAI, and use that within all here to purchase a Nexus mutual insurance, I have to buy the NXM token also, because I have to be a member in order to buy the insurance, but I can buy Nexus mutual insurance uh, on this, this compound loan. But I'm doing it all within my wallet, with, with tokens that are moving back and forth, with smart contracts that might represent a token. Um, another compo composable part of this is I can take uh, either my, my ETH or my DAI, and I could potentially buy, say, a SET token, which, which represents, say, a 75, 25 ETH Bitcoin or something, or uh, their 20-day their moving average or token. But this is actually its own token that holds, that, that creates this uh, rebalancing every once in a while, and this is what it, it mirrors. Now, this token is going to show up in my wallet along with this, along with this, along with potentially this. So all these are, are showing up in my wallet and this composability is giving me the ability to layer and structure different investments, different returns uh, on top of one another. Now, to be completely fair, this is potentially extremely dangerous because 
because if one of these, if, if this is the building block of everything, and this drops in value really quickly or goes up in value really quickly, or worse off, there's a bad oracle, right? Someone, um, uh, someone hacks the oracle or, or there's some, some problem with it, it can cause everything to go awry, right? It can cause my, uh, my collateralized debt position or vault, as, as they call it now, to get liquidated, which can cause a, a domino effect in all my other investments, right? Um, also, to be fair, everyone using this now, or most people using this now, are real enthusiasts in the industry. They understand the technology. They understand what they're doing. And, and so they also understand that they can lose everything they've invested and probably not investing too terribly much money in all this. Um, as we move forward and as we try to gain adoption, someone's going to have to build an easier user interface and an easier uh, ability for consumers, for retail investors, to understand what they're doing. And maybe they don't need to fully understand it the same way I don't fully understand all the time if, if I invest in a hedge fund or if I invest in some sort of ETF. I don't fully understand what they're doing behind the scenes. I look at their returns and I, and I look at their risk profile and I go, okay, I'll, I'll invest in that. Uh, I look at the robo-advisor and I say, okay, you know what, I do want to go on a vacation in two years and here's how much it's going to cost and you guys do what you have to do with, with your computers and your algorithms, here's my money. I set it and I forget it and hopefully at the end of two years I have enough money to take my family on that vacation I want, right? I don't have to understand all the underpinnings of the algorithms, right? At this point, there's a lot of manual process that has to take place to make all this work. However. The reason I've started talking about composability is because some of the cool new projects that have started recently, uh, in addition to, to say Nexus Mutual, which is very necessary, in addition to SET, now people are building um, composability projects even on top of those, right? So there, there are projects that I, I will talk about in the very near future that build on top of that, that give me the ability to say, okay, I want um, I, I'm, I'm a conservative investor, but I want everything I do to be decentralized. I want to hold it in my own wallet, and I just put in the amount of money I want to invest, and it takes all the positions for me. All right, that's where, where composability is going, and that's what's interesting to, to me. Composability is also going to be interesting to see, see how it builds when we start to talk about things like uh, security tokens, digital assets, a token that might represent um, a piece of uh, real estate or a token that might represent a loan, a, maybe a peer-to-peer -peer loan that I can then use as, as an asset, I can then use as, as uh, collateral for, for something else I want for some other loan, right? So if I have, if I take my die and, and uh, there's a company called um, Realty, right, where, where they are actually buying homes and, and I'll reference this in the notes. They're buying homes, buying rental homes, and then allowing me to use my ETH or my DAI to actually buy into uh, some of the income stream from those homes. So I essentially own an income stream from rental homes using my tokens. Now, I, I can't do that if I'm in the US. I have to be in another country, right? But I can take my DAI, I can potentially buy you know, into a real estate token, right? Or maybe an income token. And then maybe I take that token and I use that as collateral for a loan that, that I get, right? And so now we, we start talking about composability. Now I, I, I might use that loan to, to fund you know, some sort of business venture that I have, right? In addition to that, I might somehow use some of this to, to uh, I say, look, I need some sort of insurance, and I can create that potentially using Nexus Mutual, uh, Ether Risk, um, one of those options. So that's, um, to me, that, that's what's really interesting and what's really neat right now about decentralized finances. All these great teams actually from around the world are getting together because of all the open source nature and they're, and they're building this composability, or they're utilizing composability to build really interesting structures and really interesting financial tools that are actually not available in the traditional world. Or if they're available in the traditional world, it's either too hard to, to manage it all or too expensive. Because as you move from, from cash 
to bank, to brokerage, to advisor, right, to manager, everyone's taking their cut along the way and the friction involved here and the fees involved here make it to where I got to earn like 20% over here on, on this and then you, you start rolling back all the fees and it turns out I'm only making say 10%. And this is kind of an extreme example, but everyone's gonna take their little cut along the way, right? And I have to go, okay, for the risk I took here, was this return worth it? The composability nature of decentralized finance is cutting out a lot of the friction and fees, uh, albeit it is increasing some of the risk if we don't fully understand the smart contracts and fully don't understand the investments that we're making um, it, it is actually increasing the risk because we, we potentially have this domino effect and there's no throat to choke, as we say. You can't, there, there's no lawsuit, there's no insurance for the manager, the advisor, the brokerage, the bank, et cetera. So if I go into this investment and from a risk perspective, I shouldn't have gone into it and these people along the way knew that and allowed me to go in and, and lost all my money. In the traditional world, I, I can sue this person, I can sue this person, I can sue this person potentially and get some of my, my funds back. In the decentralized world, it's, de, you know, it's decentralized. I've, I've made my decision, no one has talked me into anything. Um, and so, if, if money is lost along the way, I, I have no one to go to to get my money back. Likewise, if I lose my, my private keys or something's hacked or, or whatever, there's no way to really re recover that as of now. So it's increasing risk, but it's also increasing the ability to, to do different things with your money and do it in a relatively short amount of time. Um, the, the fact that the data is immutable and transparent is also making for the ability for, for you know, money managers that, that are algorithmically based to potentially look across the assets that I hold and look at my risk profile and maybe make suggestions. Say, look, if, if, if you're uh, meant to be moderate, currently your, your portfolio is a little bit aggressive. If you want to take this one little hedge using, say, uh, synthetics and, and do a synthetic inverse Bitcoin because everything else you have is, is you know, very long crypto, you can do that and hedge and maybe a, a computer uh, algorithm actually is, a, is able to tell me to do that without actually knowing me. It can just look inside my wallet and do that. So those are the opportunities with composability. That's what it is. I'm going to go into a few more of the uh, cool applications I've seen that involve composability in the next uh, few videos. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you like the other videos. Hit us up, uh, interaxis.io. Hit us up on our, on our YouTube channel, uh, Twitter, at interaxis8. Let me know if there's any other videos you'd like to see. Uh, also, we're doing some custom education. If anyone needs any customized education tools, uh, let us know. We can help educate investors. We can help educate partners, advisors, whoever it is. Um, again, we, uh, we hope you enjoy these videos and we hope to see you in the next one.